This is the tragic story of when 12,000 cars tried to enter a town with a capacity of only 5,000. This caused all the roads to be blocked, and this is when the snow began to fall. Before we get into this video, my name's Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and on the weekly, we share stories of all things tragedy, such as caving, maritime disasters, plane crashes, and more. So if you're into true horror stories, consider tapping that subscribe button. This is the snowstorm terror in Marie. Pakistan is a country situated just north of the equator, and throughout the year, they experience extreme hot and cold seasons. In the summer, temperatures soar, and in 2017, Pakistan actually set a new record of 53.7 degrees Celsius, or 127 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the winter, starting in December, they are hit with sub-zero conditions, especially towards the western border and the foothills of the Himalayas, blanketing the country in snow. And in March, it remained the hottest recorded month since 1961. But earlier of this year, in January 2022, a cold front started to sweep across the country of Pakistan. But something was different this year. The winds blew more vigorously, and the cold was that much more bitter. Something big was coming, and nobody knew it. Videos of families and children playing in the snow were circulating online, showing how fun the snow was in Marie a local holiday town situated around 28 miles or 46 kilometers north of the capital of Islamabad. Murray was constructed in 1851, of course, on the hill of Murray. It was initially built for the British army during their rule to escape the blistering heat in the plains of the Punjab. It's classed as a hill station, meaning it sits on the side of a hill overlooking the beautiful valleys below, attracting around a million tourists annually. Back in the day, it was only accessible to British citizens of the British Raj. Access to shops and inns were restricted to non-Europeans. However, since the independence of Pakistan in 1946, Marie was open to everyone and has retained its position as a popular tourist destination ever since. As the first week of January progressed, everyone wanted to join in on the fun. These clips continued to circulate around, and by Thursday, due to the unusually heavy snowfall, 100,000 tourists and day-trippers got in their car to make the trip. Yes, you heard that right, 100,000 people. Commonly, a lot would travel to the Mori Hills without checking any weather forecasts at the very first sign of snowfall, but people have not flocked in these numbers to Marie for around 15 to 20 years. On January the 3rd, there was heavy rainfall and snow forecast nationwide through to at least January the 7th. Throughout that week, there were thunderstorms, risks of flooding, but the heavy snowfall was forecast for the weekend. So, on the Friday, January the 7th, thousands of families and tourists from the neighboring provinces packed supplies for a day in Marie, hoping to catch a glimpse of the snow as it fell on the hillside. One of the families traveling that day was an Islamabad police officer named Naveed. He'd taken some time off to take his family to see the winter wonderland. They packed their bags, packed some water and some food for the journey, and in the afternoon around 4 p.m. off they went. As they left the house, the first thing they noticed was that the sky was gloomy and overcast, but as the snow was forecast for Saturday, they didn't think that much of it. The journey from Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan, to Marie takes around one and a half hours. The trip would start off on a crowded motorway, but this would soon merge into a single road etched out of the woodland that clings to the mountainside. When the road merged, the traffic started to become prevalent. The cars were moving along at a decent pace, but they were bumper to bumper. As they were sat in traffic, a beautiful family day out turned into an absolute nightmare. White clouds started rolling in and the winds began to blow. Pitter patters of rain turned into buckets and a huge storm broke out. The cars continued moving up the hill, but the window wipers could barely keep up. Pretty soon after it started raining, temperatures plummeted to sub-zero. The people in their cars turned their heaters on and prepared for the worst. Snow began to plummet down from the sky, and everyone could not believe their eyes. They'd caught the snowstorm early and just hoped that it would end soon. Sadly, the snow was relentless. It just did not let up. It was described as not snow, not even heavy snow. It was unprecedented. The people had never seen such a huge snowstorm in their entire lives. Visibility became poor, and the traffic became even slower as cars struggled to trudge through the snow and eventually the traffic stopped altogether. People started to get out of their cars to dig the snow out from the tires, 
but it was futile. As fast as they were removing the snow, it was being replaced. And as the night went on, temperatures dropped to as low as minus eight or 17 degrees Fahrenheit. More than four feet or 122 centimeters of snow fell in the area of the Marie Hills Resort. People were absolutely terrified, prompting many to abandon their cars in the road to seek shelter in hotels. But when the hordes of people got there, they found that the owners had increased their prices to make the most of the tragedy. Rooms that were 6,000 to 10,000 rupees per night were now being rented for 70,000 rupees per night, forcing the majority of people to trek back to their cars and stay the night in terrible conditions. Food prices were also marked up high. Prices for a cup of tea that usually averaged around 40 rupees were now being sold for 700. So people that went to town had to return to their car with little supplies because they couldn't afford any. The government declared the area as a disaster zone and allowed no further cars to enter on the Friday. Throughout the night, no rescue came. Families huddled together and sang to keep their spirits high. One of the people that refused to pay the prices of the guest houses was the Uslamabad police officer and his family. They bunkered down for the night and tried to stay warm, and around 5am got through to his son on the phone. He said, and I quote, There are children trapped in the cars trapped here. They are crying. There hasn't been any food or water. The children are in poor condition. We are just going to turn on the heat and go to sleep. He had no idea that this would be the very last phone call to his son. The snow continued to blanket the Marie Hill all throughout the night. The wind bellowed, causing avalanches that further buried the cars below. Trees were uprooted and came crashing down, even crushing some cars. Now just imagine being in your car with your whole family in a blizzard, on the side of a hill, not knowing when rescue would arrive. It's a daunting situation to be in. They battled through the night, and around 6am, the sun revealed the full scale of the disaster. There were around 10,000 cars stuck on the road, bumper to bumper, but there was no way out. People were again forced to huddle in their cars and wait for rescue. Around 7am, to everyone's relief, five infantry army platoons a specialist mountain rescue team and mountain rangers appeared on scene. The first thing they got to work on was providing food, water and blankets to those in need. They were pictured digging with shovels, heavy machinery and even bulldozers, but they had 10,000 vehicles to free along a large road with snow still coming down. They went across the cars, but as they did so, it dawned on them that they were too late for some. They discovered some tragic scenes. They started to come across cars where, sadly, the drivers had succumbed to the bitter cold. In total, 14 people died from hypothermia. Tragically, the Islamabad police officer and his family were discovered lifeless in the morning. But they had not died from hypothermia. They'd actually died from carbon monoxide poisoning after trying to put the car heaters on with the exhaust clogged. 22 people were found dead in their cars. 10 men, 10 children and 2 women. Rescue efforts continued all the way through Saturday, and even on Saturday evening, a thousand cars were still stuck in the snow. Sunday evening, 99% of the cars were cleared, and the roads didn't open until Monday. Authorities did warn as early as the weekend before that too many vehicles may try to enter the town, but it seems nobody took heed, and as disaster struck, the Prime Minister appeared to blame tourists for ignoring the warnings and not checking the weather. Some were angry, claiming that they had not been made aware of the coming storm whatsoever, claiming that they did forecast the excessive snowfall, but no precautions were actually taken. Three days before the incident, one of the ministers praised the number of tourists heading towards Marie, claiming that the increase in tourism was a testament to the economic prosperity of the common man, encouraging people to actually go. What made it worse is that snow removing machinery and snowmobiles had failed to respond in a timely manner. It was also found that the snow removing machinery completely ran out of fuel by the time it even reached the incident site, making them completely useless. And a lot learned that day that maybe snow isn't all it's cracked up to be. Rest in peace to the 22 people that died in this horrific tragedy. So that was the sad story of the tragedy in Marie. Honestly, it makes me so sad that the biggest reason that people died in this event was that people upped the prices of the hotel and made it unaffordable for people that needed it. 
You could also blame the government for not making it very clear there was a storm coming, failing to help in a timely manner and the rescue efforts just being all over the place. But what's the use in blaming? People tragically died here, whole families were lost, and my heart and condolences go out to their families and friends. But that is the end of this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.